Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of my shitty book review channel where I do a shitty job at reviewing good books. Today's good book, which I will be reviewing shittily, is Finlater, written by a guy named Sean Stewart Ruff. Now, I found this book at a used bookstore in Connecticut, and it just sounded interesting. I, I like the title, just how plain it was. That's what got it off the shelf for me. I read the uh, description of it, and I said, you know what, what the hell? It's used, it's, you know, if I don't like it, at least I didn't spend a lot of money on it. But I did, in fact, like it. I liked it enough to make a shitty book review out of it. So, just bear with me throughout my shitty introduction, and then we'll get right into it, all right? All right, folks, so as I said before the intro, I'm going to be reading Finn later by by Sean Stewart Ruff. Now, the main character is Cliffy, Cliffy Douglas. He's a 13-year-old, uh, born in Finlater, which is uh, a town, I guess, inside of Cincinnati. It's a coming-of-age love story set in a racially charged 1970s Cincinnati. So, he's 13 years old, so it's kind of a YA. So being just fully up front with you guys, there was a couple parts in this novel that made me a bit uncomfortable because the love interest in this story is another 13-year-old boy named Noah. And he was a Jewish boy, so... These two boys kind of falling in love with each other was was a bit of a climactic event, and that was kind of the driver of the story once those two met and trying to be able to at least spend some time with each other. And there were some issues with the family, some issues with friends, of course, what everyone's going to think. And there was a lot of times they were called Oreo, and these are from people that didn't even realize that they were kind of seeing each other. It's just how they reacted to them simply being friends. So that kind of gives you an idea of what they were going through and they couldn't even be honest with each other about their feelings because just being friends, being Jewish and being black, they were getting this kind of behavior and this ridicule from their peers. So it drove the story and it was pretty cool. But what I was saying it made it uncomfortable was the sex scenes in this book and there were several. They were quite graphic. And considering we're dealing with two 13-year-old boys and having graphic sex scenes, I just wanted to make sure that I was fully up front with that because that made me uncomfortable. It might make you uncomfortable too. Sean took artistic liberty. It's his book. He can write whatever the hell he wants. But those scenes made me very, very uncomfortable. Um, I'm not even sure they were quite necessary. He could have probably just alluded to what was about to happen and then skipped on to the next scene. However, Sean chose not to do that. So read with caution. There was also two other scenes that I felt were a bit unnecessary. One of them was a scene where our main character, Cliffy Douglas, happened to be walking by his parents' bedroom in the middle of the night, and he watched his parents have sex. And I guess he was trying to figure out why his mother was so in love with their terrible father, who had deserted them about ten years prior and came back into their lives as though nothing happened. And as though nothing happened, the mother took him right back. Like, it was kind of crazy. So the kid wanted to know what the hell this guy had that the mother was willing to accept him back into their lives over the well-being of her children. And it was during this sex scene where he kind of got an idea of what it was that he had that her children didn't. And during this sex scene, he goes into some detail about what the man's penis looks like, his own father. And then he went into some more description about wondering what it would feel like having that penis in his mouth. So again, I was really uncomfortable with that scene. I didn't see it necessary. It was kind of like reading It by Stephen King, where all the boys are in the sewer, and all of a sudden they all think it's a good idea to have a gangbang on their female friend down there in the sewer before going and battling it out with this shape-shifting spider. I thought that scene was unnecessary. I don't know why some writers decide to do these things, but they do. I think this book would have been a lot better if they skipped over the sex scenes, just alluded to it, and left the, left the incest kind of stuff out of it too because towards the end of the book we figure out why Noah's father is sick, and it's because in the 70s, homophobia was rampant, probably even more so than racism, because people of all races, in this country at least, America, absolutely detested homo homosexuality. And this was the precursor to the AIDS outbreak in the 80s, where it was 
it was the homosexuals were hated for that too. So this was before that even. So it was just not accepted at all. So Noah, it turns out his father was gay. Noah gets the great idea to, hey, maybe it'll feel better if my dad and I fool around. So they fool around. The father ends up going to a mental hospital. So again, another scene, I just, I didn't understand the purpose of it. He could have just revealed that his father was a homosexual and left it at that. And that's why he was sick. He was battling it out with his own emotions and his own homosexual tendencies. I think that would have made this a much better book. However, leaving all those things aside, leaving all those out of this book review, I would like to praise this book because it was very good trying to consider what it would be like prior to the 90s and 2000s when gay rights activism really took off and people really started trying to understand what that what that whole community is going through and trying to accept them because it's very accepted nowadays. Nobody gives a damn who you're attracted to. It's just... As long as it's not children, you're fine. It's just one of those one of those issues where thinking about it in the seventies, thinking about not only that, but racial tension area in Cincinnati about the, a white and a black kid being in love with each other in the seventies. I thought that was a very, very good book. And the whole time we're dealing with that, we're not only dealing with that, we're dealing with extreme poverty because they wanted to live in a better neighborhood, but they just couldn't. And the mother was trying to get on some sort of a, like a housing welfare, I think they call it Section 8 kind of a benefit, but she was unable to, so she had to lie about the father being back in the house because having two working parents doesn't make that, meet the, meet the credentials that they needed. With that said, the children the whole time, one of them, the youngest boy, because there's three brothers, you know, Cliffy has two other brothers. The youngest one, Corey, he's absolutely in love with his father. The oldest one can't stand him. They're constantly fighting. And, this, you know, the kid's just a boy, so he's getting beat all the time. They want to know what the hell the mother sees in the father. So that's a big part of the book, too. And towards the end of the book, she finally comes to her senses and, and chooses her children first. And it, it was just kind of a wild ride like that because we're dealing with a couple different things at once. Number one, the main driver of the story is our main character Cliffy and his love interest with Noah. Dealing with all the racial tension behind that. Then we're dealing with the uh, Noah's father having these issues with his own homosexuality and had that how that makes his family dynamic difficult. And as a result, they likely have to move back to New York, which causes a lot of issues in, in Cliffy because he's torn. He loves his kid and doesn't want him to go anywhere, but he's got to try to figure out a way to live life without him. The other issue is the family dynamic over at Cliffy's house with his mother, his father, and his brothers constantly fighting all the time. So there's there's a lot going on in this one little YA book. I mean, and when I say little, it's it's little. It's um, let's see, it was like two hundred and geez, two hundred ninety two pages, and it's not exactly, you know, hard reading. And there's look at all those chapter breaks. There's there's tons of them, tons of them. Doesn't say the number of chapters, but I mean, tons of blank cha blank pages between chapters and everything else like that. So, the book's probably closer to three uh, two hundred and fifty pages. Really easy read. It was a lot of fun. I banged it out uh, about a week, I'd say. You know, I finished it up on my vacation, and you know, I I enjoyed it. So I wanted to make sure that I gave credit where credit was due. To uh, I want to make sure I get his name right, the Sean Stewart Ruff. <clears throat> it was a good book. Again, I think he could have left out. The graphic sex. I think he could have left out the incest. Uh, I don't know why writers like himself and Stephen King decide to do these things, but whatever, you know. Your artistic uh, vision, you do what you want, your book. With those things aside, again, I did like it. So I'll likely be leaving a link to the book below, an Amazon link, if you do decide that you want to check it out for yourself, published in 2008. So it's not that old, maybe about 15 years old, 16 years old, so it's still quite relevant. But anyways, uh, yeah. Give it a read for yourself. And, hey, everybody, you could have tuned into any book review channel on YouTube. If for some reason you decide to pop into mine, I love the hell out of you for it. As always, we'll see you next time. Peace.